Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome to Adventures in Small Business, a collaboration of Small Business Administration, Hawaii District Office, and its partners, where we showcase the stories of local entrepreneurs and small businesses. I'm your host, Victoria Anilita from VBOC of the Pacific, and my next guest is a serial entrepreneur, startup mentor, and advisor with 16 years experience in Japan and Asia. He's the founder of Startup Hui and a co-director of Founder Institute Honolulu Chapter. Russell has successfully built two different companies from the ground up to acquisition and NASDAQ IPO and is the co-founder of DevLeague, which is Hawaii's leading coding bootcamp. Welcome and aloha, Russell. Well, thank you for having me here. Thank you for being here. You have a very impressive background, and I know you also worked at the Microsoft and other corporations. So who made you choose entrepreneurship, Rob? I don't think I chose entrepreneurship as much as I think it chose me. Um, you know, we grew up pretty pretty modestly in, here in Hawaii. And um, I think it, from a young age, you know, because we didn't have a lot of things, I had to create stuff and make stuff and, and, and figure out how to do things. And so from there, I think, um, you know, you start with, the, you know, helping your friend with the paper route and you start, you know, kind of hustling when you're a kid and stuff. And um, I think that really gave me the foundation for, for you know, understanding what people want and what, what are people willing to pay for. And it started mm -hmm. from there. And I heard you started seven companies, is that right? Yeah, I started my first two companies in at, at the University of Hawaii. It was called um, College of Business Administration back then. It wasn't, you know, what it's cool now. It's called Scheidler, right? And uh, I started two companies there. One of them was, the first one was called Overseas Hawaii, and the second one was called Graphic Words International. I was a college senior, and I started one as a solo entrepreneur, and the other one was with a partnership. So it seems like once you start, you can't stop. Uh, you know, I was a college, a college of, you know, I was a, a business major, and it was really interesting because, as opposed to learning about it in school and trying to do things in class, we were doing it in real life. I mean, we were, we were literally bringing in a Matson container of goods from, you know, from 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 China and really selling them at, at what they call CVS stores, Long's Drugs now today, and other large stores back then. Uh, I was in way in over my head at that time. I was a college senior. What did I know, right, in that <laughs> sense? And I had a partner for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it really gave me the seeds of, of building my own company. That's impressive. Uh, so now you're a co-founder of DevLeague. Yep. Uh, what is the mission of DevLeague? Well, DevLeague is, you know, as you said earlier, you know, we are Asia's premier coding boot camp uh, for people who are trying to, you know, motivated persons who are trying to pick up skills and really get their career starts in technology. We sponsor, you know, we, we specialize in um, JavaScript uh, and cybersecurity. And then when, when people finish the 16-week or the 30-week program, we help them in, you know, get into um, career starts. So we help them find their jobs if that's what they're looking for. That's wonderful for our community. Thank you for doing this. Uh, and I heard you have a few scholarships at DevLeague. So we have, um, we've always traditionally had, we've, from the very beginning, my partner Jason Sewell and I um, were very blessed to have been provided with you know, other people's help and stuff along the way. And we felt it was really important to give back to our community as well. Um, over the last five years, we have, we have created something called DevLeague uh, Elevate Scholarship, where we've put out $122,000 worth of our own money out of our own pockets to do this. Um, recently, um, you know, we were providing it really for, for um, needs-based scholarships, and we had a female hacker scholarship. But today, we're finally announcing uh, a new scholarship for diversity, so women, persons with, um, of underrepresented groups and minorities, and of course, LBGTQ, um, a special scholarship fund uh, up to $10,000 per cohort, and, and the minimum is $1,000 scholarship for uh, persons that identify themselves as you know, underrepresented women and minorities and LBGTQ. Wow, so that's a brand new scholarship. It's a brand new scholarship. We're announcing it here on ThinkTech. Uh, so thank you for uh, you know, <laughs> asking about it. That's exciting. So if I want to apply for the scholarship, what should I do? Uh, the best way to apply for the scholarship is, is well, anyway, to get into DevLeague, anything is to really mm -hmm. go to the website uh, at devleague.com and then apply through there. Um, we do require people to apply for the scholarship. We do uh, require people to apply for 
Dev League to, you know, in order to enable themselves for it. Uh, the scholarship is geared towards the paying for the tuition, a portion of the tuition uh, within Dev League, uh, and it's not designed to cover the entire tuition, but it, of course to defray some of the costs there. You know, we've we've have um, tuition payment plans. We have. Uh, you know, uh, tuition loan programs. Again, we have other workforce development programs like American Apprentice Initiative as well, too. All with the goal of providing, um, making it, making education affordable for as many people as we can. Perfect, and I think it's a really great profession to be in nowadays, uh, right? I, I think with our team at you know at Dev League, uh, Jason and I, I mean, we're we're super thrilled about what we do. We love our jobs. I can't wait till Monday all the time to come into the office. <laughs> and thank God it's Monday in that sense, right? Um, yeah, it's, and it's it's super fun what we do. That's perfect. So, how can veterans uh, benefit from Dev League? So, recently, um, we were at, it took us two and a half years to get to the point where we were enabling we were finally approved for the veterans um, GI Bill. So what that means is veterans um, who have um, GI Bill benefits can apply to Dev League and have their tuition and also their um, housing covered for the duration of their time in Dev League. Uh, originally it was only for the web development class and now we've just been approved a little about two weeks ago for the cybersecurity course as well. Congratulations. It, it's, um, yeah, thank you very much. It's been a few years in the making and we're very thrilled to you know, work with the, the veteran community in um, providing them with resources so that they can get their career starts as really civilians, right? Cybersecurity. So during our Boots to Business classes, actually, we're talking about cybersecurity a lot because this is a raising uh, issue. Mm -hmm. And this could be a great idea for a business, right? So can people come to Dev League, uh, learn coding, and start a business? Can you help them with starting you a know, business? It's it's probably one of the more we, we have a lot of graduates we have a lot of students that come in from our into Dev League program whether they're you know switchers professional you know, professionals working at one place and they are they're either unsatisfied or they're looking for another they're looking to scratch their itch um, and people have different and people come into our program and then they have different outcomes some of the outcomes most of the outcomes is hey I want to help me find a full time job mm -hmm. the second one would be I want to build my own company I want to build my own startup the third one is I'd like to join a startup I don't want to build it but I want to be part of one and be an early employee and the fourth one being I'm I'm not looking for a full-time job. I'm going to do, you know, freelance work, project work with the companies that I, I like and, and work with people that, that I find interesting. And the fifth one would be, I'm currently in, especially for part-time students that come into our program. I like my company. Um, I may not like my boss, but I'm going to I'm going to stay with my company. I'm going to change my role and do more. So yeah, and, but the people that get us really excited are the ones that want to start their own company as well too. And so we get to kind of influence their hard coding, their soft skills, and of course, offer them some additional advice and insights into entrepreneurship as well. It's just a part of what you know, Jason and I do since we've started multiple companies, you know, and um, for me, seven companies and Jason two at, at the same time. So we have, a, you know, we know a thing or three about entrepreneurship as we go about how we teach um, in Dev League. Perfect. So for those who don't know, VBOC of the Pacific is helping transitioning military and veterans with entrepreneurial development. And uh, Russell is actually one of our mentors, and he's helping a lot of uh, startups, uh, our clients. So thank you for doing that. We're happy to have you. Thank you. Uh, it's it's very it's really fun. It it. it it enables us to get on the base. It enables us to work with some of the veterans, and of course, the other part of it is the entrepreneurship part. It's it's a really fun exercise when we go through it. Um, so right now, uh, let's say I want to start a startup, a tech startup here in Hawaii. What would be your advice? Where should I start from? What would be my first step? You know, I think as um, as entrepreneurs, from an entrepreneur to another entrepreneur, I think really the first thing to do is decide that you're going to start. Right? Most people talk about it, and very few people actually put it into motion. So the first thing you want to do is, I need to start, start somewhere. You may have this bigger part, bigger vision, and a bigger piece of, the, uh, of what you want to do. Break it into smaller pieces, and then start there. You know, so when it comes down to it, I always try to give the advice to other entrepreneurs who are just starting out, especially first-time founders. Um, build something that people want and are willing to pay for. So let me unpack that a little bit. Build something that people want really means understanding, being able to ship a product, right? Build something, so that you have the ability to build something, that you can build a product, that you can actually put into somebody else's hands and says, here, here you go, or a service that you can say, look at what we can do for you, that people want and are willing to pay for. The willing to pay for part of it 
people want part of it is is, is getting you are get, you know getting users for it. They don't necessarily have to pay for it, but if they really like it, they will pay for it as well. So building things that people want and are willing to pay for, real core to starting up of a of an entrepreneurial effort, a startup, a startup company. That's a great advice, actually. And we have a lot of clients who are coming to us and saying, I have this great idea, but I don't want to share because someone will steal it. What would you say? You know, and it's fun when we do it at the VBOC office. I've done this at Founder Institute. I've done this for quite a bit of, you know, even when, I was, um, when I'm doing work with Startup Hui and stuff. Really, if you have a great idea, a great idea is a great idea. It's a great idea, and if it's, if, especially if it's solving a problem. If you have a stupid idea, Nobody's going to steal your stupid idea. No one cares, right? And so the best way to get out there is to put your idea out there, share it with people, get feedback from, from, from people, and preferably not from just your family because your family loves you. Your friends and family will say nice things about you. But for people who don't know you, get some feedback from, from them. And when you get that feedback, you can come back and iterate on the feedback you're getting. And you have to decide as the founder and CEO of your company, decide if that is actually going to be valid or if that's what you want to build. But getting feedback early and getting feedback um, often, it's free mm -hmm. for the most part, and can inform your decision in how you go about building your product. And it can give you more ideas, right? How and it also can identify, it can give you more ideas, but it can also identify some of the people that you're building for, and if people really care about it. You know, you don't want to build a, a vitamin, you want to build a painkiller, right? And so build them something that people want and are willing to pay for. It really comes back down to those core, core, you know, guiding principles, I should say then. Exactly. So it's not so much about you, it's all about customers, right? It's never about yourself, <laughs> right? It's, you're building it for customers. Right? I mean, it, it, if you want to build a sustainable business, it's always about building, who am I building it for? What do they really want? What's the pain point we're solving for? Mm -hmm. And then really working backwards. Now, can I provide some expertise or some insight or some product or some service that will solve that pain point? Mm -hmm. Because if you're not, then it's a, you know, it's a fun widget to have. But when push comes to shove, people don't always need to have it. If they really, really need it, then you know, they'll tend to want to have it. And for some things, it's free. So for most things, it's got to be sustainable. So you have to charge some money for it. Exactly. So how tech company is different from any other regular company? How to start a tech company? What are the things to consider before starting you know, this venture? Uh, it's a, I think that's a really good question. I get asked a lot this from, you know, I, I think that there's, for a lot of startup companies, you know, and I'm fairly pretty good at about the startup company. So you know, I take that with a grain of salt for other type of companies that I may, you know, that may be starting up. But um, we tend to want, especially in technology companies, want to have the, the, the hustler, hacker, designer triangle. So you know, if you have the hustler part of it, which is typically the business person or the new business development person or what have you, a person who can speak and communicate to other audiences. And then the, the second part of it is having the hacker part of it, being able to build, being able to have that technical underpinnings. And then of course having the designer part of it or having the person that can build things that so it just works, right? So when you have the hustler, hacker, designer triangle, um, it's the kernel of, 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 a, of a startup company that can deliver some software product or can deliver something in technology. Now again, you know, it's vastly different for a hardware comp a hardware startup, or vastly different for, say, a restaurant, for instance, right? Um, I'm fairly good at the technology side of it, but having the technical underpinnings, especially if you're building a software company, you have to have it. And I find a lot of entrepreneurs um, have the ideas, but don't have the ability to build upon on the technical side of it. And it's probably the most expensive part of building a, a, a technical company, a software company. So it's not just idea, but skills and abilities, right? Well, it starts off with an idea, but then again, you need to start, right? Exactly. And, and like I said, build it into, break it into, into from a bigger pieces into smaller pieces, and just get started. Most people just don't start; they talk about it a lot. Too bad. <laughs> well, thank you, Russell. We are taking a short break, and we will see you in two minutes. I'm Jay Fidel, ThinkTech. ThinkTech loves energy. I'm the host of Mina, Marco, and Me, which is Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, former legislator, and uh, Energy Dynamics, a consulting organization in energy. Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on ThinkTech. Aloha. Hey, Stan, the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday 
on Standard Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Aloha, welcome back to Adventures in Small Business. I'm Victoria Anulite, and today I'm talking to Russell Chang from DevLeak. We are talking about how to start a tech company in Hawaii. So are there any specific uh, requirements in Hawaii, or is Hawaii Venture anyhow different from, let's say, mainland Venture? Yeah, just to start off the business part of it, I mean, I think you know it's no different than any other city, right? You need to register your your, your business here in Hawaii, make sure that you're a legal entity. I tend to look at it as um, housekeeping, right? You need to have the legal infrastructure, the accounting, the finance, the real estate, and the uh, kind of personnel HR part of it. That kind of builds the foundation of your organization. And if as long as it's legal and, and what your what you know product or service that you're doing is legal in the country, or it has inter you can interpret it as legal, um, then you have a you have a, a legal you know a basis to build a company that is universal whether it's in any city or another um, I think the things to think about here in Hawaii is try to tap into some of the uniqueness of Hawaii and some of the things that we have uh, as opposed to you know building things that we'd have to ship over to anywhere else right I mean I, I hate to say but manufacturing is a bit challenging here in terms of we have a smaller audience whereas in software and technology what we can build here is for a global audience and that you can you know you could put it into the App Store you can have it on your website and people can download it and so it's you know, it, it, it has a global audience. It also has a, a smaller footprint in yeah. terms of, you know, in terms of um, having to, you know, in terms of the environment. Yeah. And the thing I like about tech companies, online companies, is a global global audience, as you mentioned, and you can be anywhere in the world, right? Most right. of the time. Right. And yeah, and I think um, you know, you know, for what we do here at DevLeague, I mean, all the things that we teach here are the tools for people to become software developers or cybersecurity. It's not just here for Hawaii. In fact, the bulk of the people that graduate from our program stay here in Hawaii, but we do have pockets of people who have ventured off into New York, ventured off into Seattle, ventured off into, into San Francisco Bay Area. And then we have on the international side, we've had Belgium, Mexico, um, Melbourne. Uh, we have people in Korea and also in tai um, Taiwan and also in um, Japan as well too now. So they're, they're, they're coming from all over the place or they're going to all over the place internationally to the mainland and of course staying here in Hawaii. That's very exciting. Uh, so you're mentoring a lot of startups right now. Uh, so what would be the biggest challenges of uh, beginners? What they actually usually ask you? What are their biggest problems? Most people start off. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm part of the University of Hawaii's uh, virtual professional residence. I'm also part of the Shamanad's Hogan Entrepreneur Program. Um, we used to also have this for HPU and also at, at, at Punahou as well too. Um, and we used to, be, you know, be part of the entrepreneurs, um, like an entrepreneur in residence program there. Most either whether it's students or first-time entrepreneurs think that they need money to start off something, when they really need to. Think of an idea that you know, I, I keep sounding like a broken record again, right? Is build something that people want and are willing to pay for. Break it down from a larger pieces into smaller pieces and start there and get some early. Try to get some early, you know, early traction. Getting the early traction, whether it's a prototype, especially you know, if, if, even if it's duct tape or cardboard or stuck together with glue and stuff like that. But the idea is to put it in people's hands, get feedback on it, because that will save you in the long run. It gives you information, it gives you feedback, and it gives you the ability to gauge possibly early customers, but more importantly, feedback that you can iterate on. I find that most people think of all the different things about setting up a company, they need to think about product. Product, 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 right? I mean, I, I, I keep coming back down to that because if you're not shipping product, then you're not putting it in people's hands. If you're not putting it in people's hands, and I say product and product slash services, right? If you're not putting it in people's hands, you're not getting feedback and you're not gonna get revenue perhaps from that equation. Exactly. So the other good thing is that DevLeague provides a network of people, right? So you're not on your own. You have these people to share your ideas with, that feedback. 
Yes, um, you know, in the beginning part, we started off so modestly, right? We had our five graduates that came, to, uh, five you know students and, and our five graduates that came out of our program. A lot of it was built upon Jason's reputation, Jason Sewell's reputation, the other co-founder, and, um, and my reputation as well as, as entrepreneurs in the community. And then from there, we had to get the next few graduates and the next few graduates. 200 graduates later, you know, we have a, a, a lot of developers in the developer community now that companies and employers can tap into. But more importantly, we also have employers as part of that equation, employers that have hired Dev League graduates who have provided some feedback and provided, you know, career stars for people. And then we also have partners that help us to, to build pieces of, of our, our community out, you know. And so I think having the access to a large community of developers and, and people inside, the, you know, employers in the ecosystem it helps to get outcomes for, for people. And for some of those outcomes, it's building, a, it's building a company. For a lot of people, it's about getting, you know, you know, getting a full-time job, right? But from within them, they're constantly connected back to Dev League and part of building that ecosystem with us. We have a Slack channel that's internal. It has over 200, I checked it this morning, it had 239 people in it. Oh. Um, and they're almost all connected to the technology community of some sort, and they're all within Dev League's ecosystem. So it's definitely a great place to be. Uh, so besides Dev League, besides a mentor, a business advisor, what other people should the person have in his team if he wants to start it? You know, I, I think it's really important to surround yourself with really smart people, preferably people who are smarter than you, uh, people who can do a lot of different things if, uh, than you. I tend to think of it as almost complimentary. You know, you don't want to have a lot of yes persons with you. You want to have people that say no, and having a healthy debate is really important. So having, a, you know, I, I think if, if you're a solo founder, try to find a co-founder. It's too hard to build a company by yourself. I've done it before, it's very challenging. I prefer to have the healthy debate. So having a co-founder I think is really good. I talked earlier about having the whole, what I call housekeeping, you know, having the finance, the real estate, the accounting, the, the HR, the, 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 you know, all the different pieces out there. Surrounding yourself with service providers that can help you with that because they think of it in things in, in a different way because you don't have the time to do it and you're trying to run you know, as fast as you can, building product, trying to recruit a team. But finding a really good team is really important. It will make your life so much easier. So at Dev Week, as I understand, you have a great team, right? Since yeah, we have a, we have a really good team of dedicated um, dedicated uh, you know staff that really want to be part of our mission, which is really about you know creating technical technical learning, workforce development, and then providing career starts with people you know for for people. Mm -hmm. um, the bulk of the people are, are software engineers or have been trained in software or, or in, in the technical field, and want to also provide mentorship and, and technical skills and, and education to other people you know, because it's enriched their lives. So we play at that intersection of education and techno uh, workforce development and you know we're always looking for, for more people to, to join our team. So what would you say if uh, I would like to start a tech, tech company but I feel intimidated because I don't know anything about coding, I don't know if I can do it. I'm hesitant to do it, but what would you say um, to, to this Well, I mean, in all frankness, I would say don't start it then, right? And, and the reason why is because you need to start. You're, in many ways, you're thinking of all the excuses not to start, and the, the forever optimist in, you know, is, I just can't help myself, right? Uh, you need to figure out how to start something. You know, and sometimes that start is going to be you get kicked out of a company or it doesn't work out or whatever, or your former business closed down or, you know, whatever, so your circumstances are such that you have no choice. Sometimes it starts that way. Sometimes you're working in a company says, I'm gonna go scratch that itch, right? And I'm going to jump out because I can do that, I can do that better. Or I think I can build something, that be build a better mousetrap, as we used to say, right? So, but getting that first start and having that positive thinking that I can go build this, I can do this, a lot of people cannot do that part of it. So if they're, if they're already talking themselves out of it, I really can't help them as much. <laughs> Maybe it's not the right time. Maybe right? it's not the right timing for them too, yeah. So like we say at the Boots to Business, it's not the intelligence, it's not your idea, but actually willingness to take act on your idea. Yeah, um, my partner Jason, you know, uh, my business partner Jason Sewell and I at Relay Dev League, it's about the hustle. You know, we, get, we have graduates coming out of our program and some of them will quickly look for a job. Some of them will just take a vacation and kind of go through the paces and everything. But the ones that really hustle for it, they may not even be the top of the technical part of it, top of the technical spectrum. 
but they have enough skills and they can get an entry level. Everyone coming out of our program can get an entry level job or a junior developer job or you know, a cybersecurity professional job. But the one that hustles the more, more almost always gets it faster, gets a better one, and gets multiple offers in this. Again, no, no different in, in building a company. You want the person that's gonna be hustling out there and trying to create something out of nothing. I mean, that's what entrepreneur is all about, right? Entrepreneurialism all about is building something from really nothing, just coming out of their idea, you know, their heads and putting together a small team of people that are like-minded and thinking that they can go go conquer the world and do something, right? And so, yeah, just just start. But there are hurdles, but so what? There's gonna be hurdles at any company anyway. Great. Thank you, Russell. Uh, it was really great having you. Uh, I encourage everyone to check out devlead.com for more information. Also, if you're a veteran and you need business consulting assistance, you can reach us at bboc at hawaii.edu. Thank you for watching us today, and stay tuned for more adventures in small business every Thursday, 11 o'clock.